Did any woman actually rise to that level? Yes. There is a, at the time of Yagya Valkya, they are speaking of a Gorgi. That Gorgi is, the Yagya Valkya was a person who has reached a very high state, not yet at Chimurukta, because he is yet to become a Sanyasi. But he has reached the 91% state. Gorgi, what happens is, Janaka, the king, he comes and announces, Hey, you have so many marshes here. I got 10,000 cows. Whoever makes you claims that has reached the highest stage of a superconductor, they can come and take away the cows. Nobody rises up. Then Yajivalka comes up. He calls his 10,000 chitras. Hey, take away the cows and put it in our house. Then all the other people who are sitting, they are bristling with anger. Hey, are you a knower of God? Are you a knower of Brahman? Have you realized? He says, I only realized that I need all cows. <laughs> only for that activity. I do not say that I am a knower of Brahman. Then questions after question. The first one, the question is one lady called God. She put such questions where any normal man, his breath will go. But he bats it off, he bats it off. And finally he means the sauce. And God be yes out, <laughs> caught out. Yes out. So that's what has happened. Like that, there have been a number of um, such people. It's not that they have been, they are not. The point was, many of them were not allowed. Number one, they were not educated. And they were kept suppressed away in those days. And secondly, they were told, you simply um, uh, look after your husband and God will give you heavens. You need not do anything. All the things which he does, you get 50%, so uh, he will take you to the heavens. So this sort of a mentality as such has kept them down. And they believed in it. So they were doing night and day service to the Lord, getting up much earlier than the husband and much later than the thing. Even my mother I know. At 10 o'clock our meals will be over. Then she'll be going on doing, uh, uh, she will take uh, uh, a yeah, cloth, mop cloth. Uh, she will take water with cow dung in it because they're supposed to make everything pure. With that she will put everything, the entire big kitchen, the entire dining hall, except the place where we are sleeping, everything will be mopped up. And again in the early morning, because we are sleeping, the place has become unholy, again she will do it. And at night, She'll be doing for dosha, for idli, every day for dosha, idli, so much. And there'll be a big, um, that, uh, uh, what do you call, yeah, a, a stone grinder. And they will keep such a big one. You can't even touch it. They will take it and go on doing it. You and that do it for 15 minutes. You will get arthritis or spondylosis. But they will do it. I have seen my own mother. And then she will uh, do her prayers for half an hour before sleeping. Go to bed at 12 o'clock, get again at 3.30. This is what she was doing all her life. She was 93 years old. Of course, uh, when she was perhaps 56 or so, my father died. So after that, uh, she was so old and all that she was living. So she didn't have to do. Till that time, she has been doing it. But in spite of it, my mother was doing her uh, puja of Srividya completely. And she will cook for us all. And separately she will cook again only for the Naivitya because she can't serve this to the Lord. So separately she will there. And then she will be doing her things. At one o'clock, after washing her clothes and everybody's clothes, and then she will sit for again one hour and do all prayers. The prayers from Adishankara here, there. No prayers from her own. All borrowed prayers from books. She will be going on till the Om Sakun Kamavile Panam Malika Jumpikas Tuvika. Like that, hundreds of shlokas she knew and she will be telling. And again from 2 o'clock she will start for the afternoon tea and some tiffin. That's all her life went. But she was doing both. That's all. And even till the last minute in 93rd year, I was told by her son, who was the chief secretary in Gujarat at the time, that she never left her puja. Even in the hospital, she will just put it a few, some brief puja she will do. And she will not remain without bath. 
she was of course having diarrhea and dysentery only. So it's arbitrary that she died on fifth day or sixth day. She asked me. I just happened to meet her at Ahmedabad. Somebody had told my brother that I am there in the ashram, Bharatiya ashram. So he came up to take me. So I went and I was with them. My mother asked me, during the last days, what should I do? I said, I am your son. I am not competent. I have been doing Buddha for a long time, but still, whatever I know, I tell you. In the olden days, during the last days when you know that you are ill and you are fatally ill, you are going to be in a deathbed. Then, what the sons will do, one of the sons in the morning, he will read Gita, and then some fellow will take Sundar Kanda of Rama and I and read. So, he will be reading some holy text and she will be hearing. So that hearing them and thinking of them, she can leave the body. Whatever happens in the last minute, that we start with that in the next part. If we if you are weeping, 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 and then we leave our body, then weeping, weeping, we are born. And Zoroaster was one. When he was born, he was laughing. Then his sisters later on asked him, How is it, sir, that you are laughing when you are born? He says, When I was to die in my previous birth, I was very happy. I am going to see a new place. So I was hung with curiosity, and I was laughing, so I was born laughing. That's that. So it's like that. Whatever is the last one that happens, then I told her. You have got a, um, this recorder. You have got cassettes your son has given you a lot. You record all your songs. You are still capable of singing. You sing for one hour. You, you sing that and record all your songs in your own voice. See, this is a very great uh, uh, tip I got from one of my guru. He said, supposing a Ramayana picture comes, supposing you are having a beautiful bhajan by one great singer, do not hear it. Do not see the picture, the Ramayana even, even though it's a holy story. Once one of my colleagues, Swamiji, came in my room, in my house. At that time, the Ramayana was going on the TV. So I brought the TV from another room and put it. She turned towards the wall and here was solid. We were all disappointed. Early morning, the lady of the house, after giving him the breakfast house, Swamiji, do you people hate Ramayana, Bharata and all our mythological books or Puranas? Well, who told you? Yesterday, we brought it for you. Ramayana, you didn't see. You tell me, the Sita who was there and that, who was that who was uh, acting? One Deepika. I have been told that there are magazines where they have written, she is a very permissive girl going with so many people. Ah, that happens with all TV artists. So when she is looking at you, is Sita looking at you or Deepika looking at you, whose vibrations you are going to get? So avoid it, if you are a spiritual man. Similarly, beautiful buttons are being said, I don't want to mention names, there are some, where are supposed to be very beautiful, it's an author and they are not. His bhajans are very famous. His father's bhajans are equally famous. His father was a great devotee of the Lord. This man, I don't want to mention anything, he was the opposite of his father. Now when you are hearing his bhajan, it is his voice you are having, the vibrations are going, are you getting the vibrations of your villain or your beautiful saint? Why are you Adding, already we are having a lot of bad vibrations, you are adding them. How do we know who is good and who is bad? That is why you don't go. We have your own voice. There is no vibration there. I sing in like whatever way you can sing, you sing it like anything, it doesn't matter. You sing for yourself, your voice is okay for you. <coughs> you are not going to give it for anybody. That's all. So I told my mother, you record it in your own name, I mean in your own voice. And you, whenever you are thinking that you are going to be the last place, you go on playing it and hearing it. Nobody will be time. Because that fellow is a chief secretary, down secretary, is a chief minister. He will come in the morning and say, Mommy, how are you? Hey, nurse, look after her. He will go away. Her grandson is a chief leader in the ES, uh, ISRO. He will come. Uh, how are you, party? Oh, very good. You look well. Let me go away. The son, who is going to be? So, this is the only way. The Lord alone is with us. He will 
commit this even beyond the even when the body is dead. So he will direct us to the right world. Even if you don't get your mosha, you will be taken to a higher place. Where from you will be able to graduate to a higher level, to the highest level. So this is how it is. So far. <laughs> These are all small things, but they are all great things which I learned. I never thought seeing Ramayana, Mahabharata, oh, they are all holy. So many grandmothers even used to say, oh, Rama. But isn't that a slight way of bringing them into God consciousness? It is all only for children. Nobody gets to a God consciousness. He only sees, it's only in entertainment. Not one will get it. That's all. It is all a wrong idea. Nobody will get it. They will simply see it for entertainment to spend some three hours. It was all boring the entire day. Ah, TV, TV. That's all. And if they see some novels, uh, I mean some fictions there, then people will say, oh, this old mother also wants to see fiction. No, she says, no, no, Ramayana is seeing. <laughs> so anyway, she gets an entertainment. That's all. Nobody thinks of God, man. It's the small things in life that really matter, it seems. They really matter. They really matter. That is why from Mahatma's only we get such very small tips which are of great use for us. That's all. Shun it. It is as bad as seeing a fiction. That's all. Shun it. Because you are not thinking of the vibrations. That's all. When the Sita from there, she looks at you and bats her eyelid. It's a, it's a thoroughly spoiled woman who does it, and you will get her vibrations. That's all. And no one will see that there. That's why he had it done. So these are all lessons which I never forgot. Small things. That is why not only I used to seek such and my senior <laughs> colleagues in those days when I was householder. They used to come and live with me for three days or four days. Not much. But every day we had a revolution. Because we are seeing them actually. How they get up at three o'clock. Absolutely uncomfortable they see. Sometimes they forget to have the tea. They go on to eat the tea. And then they get up. Oh, you have been waiting. Oh, I'll, I'll just have my bath and come back quickly. I will have. See? So you call and you wait. So that shows. Don't try to break your meditation and such things for timings. For, oh, I have to go to the lecture. Hell with it. When I am in the mood, let me go. And if I lose my job, let me. Later on, I will try for some other job. To that extent. So what is important? The priority should be for the Lord. 100%. So that we should cultivate it. We should cultivate it. No job is important. No boss in the world is important. No mother or father is important. No husband or wife is important. That's all. When you are with the VIP, VVIP. See, Swamiji, I myself have, have gone through this stage, and by God's grace, I saw the danger. I know people who, who are still in this condition, where they say, I have some period of meditation, and I have faith that you know, Bhagavan will take care of everything. So they, they're not careful about their food, not careful about their association. They think that because they give some little attention to some spiritual practice, then it's a kind of a, a distorted faith almost. They'll say, God is protecting me, I'm giving some time. And, but then they, they don't, their diet is so impure, they have bad friends, and they... They're angry and they consider it righteous even. So what advice can you give? I will, I will give you a small story. We had tramp was coming through the forest. He saw a fox whose two legs were cut. And it was just lying. But it was quite fat. And the wound has healed. So it's a number of days since it was cut and has been healed. He said, how is it living? It looks at least about a year would have passed before the thing got cured, I mean, treated. So how is it living? So he was watching through the shade of a tree. His 
suddenly found a lion had dragged a sheep and came over there. It ate half of it and put the rest towards it and went away. Ah, the Lord does it. Then why the hell I should worry? It can, when it can do to a fox, I am a man. You should do more for me. So now I will not worry. He go and sat in one corner of the forest. He says, God is going to give me food tomorrow and after tomorrow and onwards. It was simply sitting. One day over, two days over, he was feeling terrific uh, uh, hunger. He said, Lord, have you forgotten me? You remember the fox but not me. Then a voice came. Hey, don't imitate the fox. Imitate the tiger. You do it. Whatever is within your power, you do it. And you are capable like the tiger. So you eat and give it to others. And don't wait for me. Yes. So, exactly like that. What we are capable of first, we have to do it ourselves. We cannot put it to the Lord. Lord, I am here. You put the meals on my mouth. You can't tell him. So this is something which you can take. You can ask him. Sir, I got a poor digestion. See, the digestion does not interfere with my, um, with my practices. That you can ask him. But not tell, you kindly prepare some nice food with all the things and then put it in my mouth. You cannot. See, so that is very essential. As I told for grace, grace marks, you have to get, pass mark is 40, 38, 39, that one mark you will get grace. And if you write for 10 marks, nobody will give you 30 marks as your grace. So you have to do your part. And then the grace comes. And then he works. So you cannot leave it to the Lord. It's a, I don't think it's a right notion. No. That's what we say. But you, we have to do all the things that we can do. And then say, Lord, I am doing my best. But I am depending on you. It's your grace which has to finish it. The finishing touch will be given only through your grace. Even Bhagavan Ramana says the same. There is a quote which we were speaking of yesterday in talks, where actually he says, if we do sadhana, and he says sadhana, if we do our sadhana to the limit of our ability, the Lord will complete for us what is beyond our capability. So the finishing touch comes from God. Yes. We, we gather all the ingredients and stoke up the fire, God bakes the cake. Swamiji, I am envious of her quotations. You can quote nice quotations. Swamiji, I heard you I say that a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could quote like you, I would be a better person. <laughs> no, he, he quotes beautifully. Yeah. No, but it's true, isn't it? That it, even, even the Buddha said that even the deep problems in, that are deeply embedded in our nature even the ones that are subconscious, they're reflected out into our, in, into the, the mind in our simple hap, 